Good morning, everyone. I hope that y'all are having a great week. I'm here giving y'all another lesson, and this Sunday we're talking about um, the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. I know probably most of y'all have already heard this story. This story goes along with um, Holy Week, that week we celebrate um, leading up to Easter. So I'm going to read it for y'all. Y'all can follow along. I really enjoy this story. It's got some great uh, little lessons in there. Um, and we're going to talk about mainly two things today. So I am reading out of the book of John. So that's our fourth and last gospel. And it's in the New Testament. And I'm going to chapter 13, and I'm starting at verse 1, and we're going to read through verse 17. And my version is CEB, so that is probably a little different than yours, but it should be pretty similar. So I'm going to go ahead. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, "'Lord, are you going to wash my feet?' Jesus replied, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus responded, those who have bathed need only to have washed their feet because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said, not every one of you is clean. After he washed the disciples' feet, he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example. Just as I have done, you also must do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who sent them. Since you know these things, you will be happy if you do them. I'm not speaking about all of you. I know those whom I've chosen. But this is to fulfill the scripture, the one who eats my bread has turned against me. So that little end part was more about Judas. But I wanted us to go over two little things. So mainly, it's Jesus's response after he washes the disciples' feet. He talks about, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. So Jesus doing this is a really big deal. Washing feet is one of the lowest of the low jobs back in Jesus's time. It was the servant's job. They would wash feet when people came through the door because everyone's wearing these sandals and their feet are filthy by the time they get to a house even if they're walking from their own house but most of the time they've been out doing other things and the servant's job was to wash the really gross nasty feet when jesus does this to his disciples it's a really big moment because jesus is lord jesus is god and we think god shouldn't be doing these lowest of low things. As Christians, we know, though, of course God would do those things. But these disciples are confused for a second. They're like, but Jesus, you're Jesus. Why are you washing our feet? We should be washing your feet because they know how special Jesus is and how extraordinary he is and what he's done. And he shouldn't be doing these things. But what Jesus is doing is showing his disciples and now showing everyone, all his followers, what we need to do for other people. So sometimes when we are in our faith walk, it being a Christian or being someone of faith means doing the grunt work or doing what other people don't want to do. And sometimes this is as simple as being nice when you don't want to be. But sometimes it's doing something really gross. You know, sometimes when we are on mission, that's what I thought about was when I was on mission. And um, there are some jobs that you just don't want to do. Maybe it's up high on a ladder and you're scared to death. Or it's just down in the mud and you don't want to do it. It's nasty. But 
you think about the meaning of everything and you think about why you're there and what you're representing. And for me, it brings such a bigger motivation into doing whatever it is. Um, and y'all will experience those kinds of things. But I know in our preteen life, it can get dirty and without being directly messy, but it can be hard. It can be hard to be someone of faith because we are taught what to do in certain times and what we should be doing, what God would do and what Jesus would do. And we don't want to do that, but that's not what we're called to do. You know, I thought a lot about um, washing, washing the feet of my enemies where we're not, of course, obviously doing that, but doing things that sim symbolize that. This is for me a really big symbol of doing what others wouldn't. You know, doing the things that other people would be like, mm, no, I'm not doing that. Are you crazy? No. Why would I ever be kind to that person? They have been mean to me time and time again, but it's showing that other side. It's getting down, and humbling yourself, really. I mean, that's what Jesus does time and time again. There's another verse in here though that is really special. I catch it all the time and it's in the story and it's verse seven and you can highlight it if you want, but it says, Jesus replied, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. I love this verse. It can really apply to so many things, but really when this whole pandemic started, I saw someone that put this verse out there and it really, I mean, for this pandemic time, of course, this really has helped me, but even through things that I just didn't know what the outcome was going to be, or the outcome was something I didn't expect or didn't like, this verse really helps me a lot of saying, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but you will understand later. And it's one of those things where it's in God's hands and it's part of his plan and you have to trust and you have to go with it. And then you look back even maybe a week later, a month, a year, three years, and you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that that happened because it led me to this. And that's what this verse is all about. And you will have so many of those moments if you haven't had that many. So that verse has always been a really helpful little snippet of the Bible for me. Um, and I very much encourage y'all to highlight that or write it down somewhere. It's a really, really awesome verse, especially in this pandemic time of when we're not really certain of when the end is. Um, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. And that's just something to hold on to right now. I do have one little thing to share with y'all. I'm, I'm sending out with this video, I sent y'all's parents another video of updates about the retreat um, and more updates about what we're doing right now. And also for another Zoom call, I know um, some of y'all got to join, some of y'all did it and we're super duper bummed and I'm so sorry about that. We are gonna have another one. I am looking at this Saturday, the 23rd. So I'm gonna do a Zoom call with y'all um, and I'm gonna get some of our volunteers on with us and we're just gonna have a good time and we're just gonna get to catch up with each other and have a really good time hanging out. So I hope that y'all look forward to that. I will be giving y'all's parents an email with all the details of that so that y'all can join because it will have a, a password. So. Thank y'all so much. I will see y'all again this weekend, hopefully.